What's up, guys? It's your girl, Matt Cox from MA Couture Crafting. If you're here with me live, what's up? If you're catching this on the replay, be sure to leave me messages and comment down below so that I know that you are here. I just got back from QuiltCon. I am still on a QuiltCon high. If you're on Instagram right now, you're seeing today was the last day of QuiltCon. You're probably seeing a gazillion people posting all of their quilty content and who they saw and which ones they love. On Instagram, you can find my top 10 quilts from the entire show. And I believe they're in order from um, one to 10. And so I just wanted to love on them some more. Um, as I was getting the content, it was kind of hard to focus on them. And I was trying to be cognizant to get the person, the creator, because people, again, work so hard on these quilts. I feel like they deserve to get loved on. And so I wanted to just hop in with you guys and I wanted to do it again. What's up? Memoirs of a Long Arm Quilters here. You're back. Good. I did not know that Sean Kemper was going to be the featured speaker. We were just talking about that on my other live a moment ago. I'm excited. I'm, ex I'm excited. I have no idea what that talk looks like. Um, very, very excited about it in Atlanta. All right. I am getting ready to jump into this. I have no idea how long this is going to be, and I don't care. We're just going to hang out. Let's just hang out, see where we go. So this is my first one that I, these aren't in any particular order other than the way that I snapped them when I was running through grabbing shots of the quilts that really grabbed me. I love this. I think one of the things that I love about it is that the shape is not something that I see often. It's not a traditional shape. It's not one that I can immediately figure out how to make. And then I love the fact that there is no, the quilting is dynamic. Do not get me wrong, but there's nothing distracting from it. It's just clean. It's clean. And it looks like these are on point. And I like the color story. It's got these kind of sharp edges. I just, I like it. I like it and I like it a lot. I love this burnt orange color right here next to this peach, next to this burgundy, and then this random gray right here. I don't know. I would love to know how people kind of pull their color stories. All right, let's see who made this one. Did I hit the button? And of course, this is not one of my greatest pictures. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Okay, so this is called Briar by Amy Friend. We're talking about the one that we just saw. So now I'm looking at what she had to say about her own quilt. My initial block was designed using my improv paper piecing method. Oh, I decided to use an on-point layout, which is definitely a favorite of mine. In recent years, I enjoyed playing with the blocks until I settled on this particular layout with negative space running diagonally through the design. I loved how some of the blocks are oriented to create closed designs and others are open. It's unexpected. The colors are soft and feminine but the gray really adds edge to the design and feels almost metallic to me. I think perhaps that's why it makes me see ring bands in the closed designs. The quilting is a half diagonal grid adding great texture and obliterating the seam lines. Yeah, I didn't see any seam lines. Nice, her techniques were machine a piece quilted without a frame domestic. She did that on a domestic? That's impressive. Foundation paper piecing, improv piece design. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's see if we can go to the next one. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Do I have to? Let's see. How to get to the next one. That's how she got those gorgeous. Oh, foundation. You're right. You're absolutely right. She did. She foundation pieced those suckers right to that point. And you don't, I don't even think about how this came together. She's not wrong. And I see rings too. She got that, she nailed it with that. Really love it. Well, this is exciting because, you know, I'm a really, 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 really tiny, tiny, tiny channel. And the fact that somebody who had something in the show actually follows me is amazing. And so this is somebody who is um, part of our community. And she actually got a quilt accepted. You know how big of a deal that is to get a quilt accepted into a show? It's just amazing. And the quilting on this, she used a variegated thread. Love variegated threads. 
and the quilting here in the center, it just doesn't distract. She nailed something that I really struggle with, which is minimalism. It's not what I do. I want to do it. I want to try it, but it's not, it's not something I know to do. And the color story here is just absolutely beautiful. And this right here is really navy. I like navy. And Linda Hutchinson is her name, and she's out of Canada. What? Canada? This is called Dot. It's named in memory of my mother, Dorothy, a.k.a. Dot, who taught me to sew on her now vintage white sewing machine. I think she would be surprised to see what I'm making now. I used a walking foot to create the quilting design. It's amazing. Love it. Ooh, look at this. Something else I don't know how... I just, I don't know. I don't know how he did it. I know Ben's work a mile away. He has a very clear voice, in my opinion. When I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see something, I'm like, oh, there's Ben. So he's dealing with an orange peel. So we're working with curves. And we all know how much we love curves. And we started off with a really big block. And then it's graduating out. And then it's flipped here. We've got some beautiful quilting that's not distracting. And it appears that these quilting lines are going this way and then this one is going that way, kind of a scotch design. The colors are vibrant in person. That blue, I mean, you think the yellow would be the one that would just come and just grab you. But that blue, I love the way he uses color. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan of his. I was following him prior to this. And uh, this piece here is stunning. Look at the way that the orange peels just all the way through graduate in size. Oh, I like this. I didn't even realize it's coming out and it comes in here like they're not going out. I like it. Pretty cool. Let's see, Ben. Oh, yep. I wanted to explore a con constant size block with the varying size patches within it and was intrigued by the possibility of combining an isosceles right triangle and an orange peel in the same block and changing the size both shapes across a quilt. Each six inch block has one orange peel from one to five inches and one triangle five to one inches or only a six inch orange peel. No pin, no glue. Curves add an organic feel to the orange peels as if they're seedlings sprouting as they use the surrounding water. Interesting. Kristen Lee's quilting emphasizes the eye's desire to meander the quilt from top to bottom, veering from side to side as they do. Huh. Go Ben. I never would have attempted that. Oh, look at this. Circles. I've seen a lot of circle quilts. I've seen a lot of circle applique quilts. You see them all the time. This one here was a little different. The color story felt very serene, kind of spa-like. The quilting doesn't distract. Um, it's just clean. This is one of those clean designs where you just kind of want to hang out with it for a bit. Love the use of the negative space down here. It's in the minimalist category. It's called Drip Drip by Elza McKenna. The idea for this quilt first wandered into my head after watching my kids eat candy buttons off a strip of paper on a Friday afternoon. Do kids still, how old are her kids? I wonder, I didn't even know kids still had that. I've also been drawn to curves and circles during the past year. And I found a lot of inspiration from the deco design. I paired these ideas with my love for minimalism and brought this quilt into being. Nice. It's clean. It's simple. I like it. Ooh, looky, looky. Color, color, color. So we've got purple next to orange next to this mustard. I'm really into mustard right now. I don't know what it is about mustard, but everything I'm like, ooh, let's do a bohemian kind of feel. I don't know what's going on with me in the mustard. And then we drop into this green and then we have some organic stripes here. And this quilting is cool. It's not a complete circle. You've got an arc. And the arc follows right up all the way to the top. Even though these are leaning this way, it feels really balanced. Obviously, I like it. Let's see what she has to say about it. It's called Ella's Pride by Karen Dooling from Michigan. The quilt ended in a far different place than how it started. I began as an exploration of the color wheel 
a way to evaluate my stash of commercial and hand dyed solids with the goal of filling in blanks where the collection of tints, tones, and shades was lacking. Strips were cut without using a ruler and assembled in color wheel order. Once the top was shared with friends, it took on a rainbow similarity and thus was quilted with concentric rainbow arcs. After posting the finished quilt during Pride Month, a friend shared that her granddaughter had just come out and is happier than she's ever been in years. She wrote that the quilt touched her heart and reminded her just how beautifully color, colorful our world is. Upon reading her words, I was reminded this is why I make quilts. Pretty cool. I like that one. Oh, guys. You guys, when I saw it, I'm telling you, when I ran into this quilt right here, I didn't know what to do. It was like, wait, if you have been with me any time, if you've seen any of my lives, I found this quilt on Instagram. Sometimes I'll find stuff and share it with everybody when I think it's just amazing. And apparently I was right. I was not wrong when I said that this quilt was amazing because here it is. This was at the very, very, very top of, I, it was up there as far as quilts that I love. This quilt speaks to me and I got a chance to see it in person. <sighs> you guys, there's something about this quilt that just does it. Now you guys know I'm a black and white girl. That's, there's no question about that. And the use of cream here and the quilting, can you guys see the quilting? It mimics well, it doesn't even it doesn't even mimic. It doesn't even echo. It's doing its own thing, but it's just the best thing ever. Obviously, I really, 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 really like this quilt. I wonder what category. I'm assuming it's in the piecing category, but I'm not 100% sure. If you want to see me gush and know that it's super organic, go ahead and check out my live because I was all over this quilt in my live. Oh, look at it. Just take one star and just flip it and fix it. And there's no pattern to this, which is unfortunate because I would make this quilt over and over and over again. It's made by Na Naomi Hughes. And this is in the modern traditionalism uh, category. Both of my children started studying violin at four years old. Now that my son is 15, it's hard to believe I've been a Suzuki parent for over a decade. The first piece of little Suzuki children all over the world learn is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, a series of rhythmic variations. I was thinking of the musical theme and variations motif when I began designing this series. Every triangular star segment is made from a single template that I drew. I varied the segments only by alternating the color scheme and or omitting a certain line on some blocks. I was very curious to see how many different blocks I could come up with from one piece. This is my second quilt in the series and I believe I've barely scratched the surface. This quilt is my jam. Love the circles. First thought moon for the block and white. Oh, for the first thought moon for the blocks. Oh, okay. Okay. Different phases of the moon. Oh, yeah. I get it. Totally get what you're saying. <gasps> this is a good one, too, guys. I'm telling you, they. They really picked some great quilts. If you'd like to see the quilts that did not get in, they have a um, QuiltCon Rejects hashtag on Instagram so you can see the ones that didn't get in. But the ones that did, they nailed it. This, oh, this one here, it's striking. It's very me. I like it so much. It looks great. The quilting looks great. We've got some X's over here and some diamonds with the... Twisted log cabin quilting in the center. Oh, I would have never thought to put that there. And then we've got some rays that are coming out here. Look at these gray stripes. I am obsessed. This is, oh, I love it. This orange and this yellow and this goldenrod. I mean, it's an ombre. You know, you guys know I love an ombre. But the way that this color right here was incorporated had she kept that out, this quilt would look so different, but it brings so much to this, this ribbon right here. Oh, love it. I love that it's bound in black. You guys, this quilt is another one of my absolute favorites from the show, in case you couldn't tell. It was done by Diane Whisper. Whisper? The Spicer. I'm butchering it. I know I am. Please charge it to my head, not my heart. 
Crossed women's number two is based on a traditional knots block. The size of the blocks were varied and reversed to connect the gray ribbons, creating a more three-dimensional image. The center block is the largest and the, I don't know what it's saying here, something blocks became smaller as they approached the edges. The colors were selected to accentuate the design of, by focusing on yellow at the center and receding to dark orange. This quilt was designed in EQ8. Good, because guess what? I just took an EQ8 class. Maybe I'll be able to design something that's amazing. Forgive me, guys. I'm working off of two screens, and I took decent pictures, but I can't see it all that great. I don't see all that great. The gray almost blends right. This is a good one. This is a really good one. This is another one that'll catch your eye. It just hits you. You know, it, it just hits you. It's got a kind of an indigenous feel to it, in my opinion. It's got a kind of feathered feel um, to it. This is called Little Spirits by Laura Gates. Um, she's at Poppy Seed Quilting, inspired by the news of 215 unmarked graves of indigenous children at an Indian residential school in Canada. 215 little spirits represent the start of the horrific discoveries at just one of the 139 Indian residential schools. Buttons on the orange crosses represent the unknown numbers of our ants of our little ancestors not yet found at other schools. The ones going through the smoke hole represent the journey we all take to lax ha the sky when we pass on, walk on, walk on, walk on the breath of our grandfathers. This is how we honor those who have passed. Cindy Jensen Fisk, maybe? You'll see 215 teardrops stitched on the dark gray paddles along with 215 vintage shell buttons placed throughout. Wow. Quilted by Joanne Davenport. Huh. Interesting. Uh oh. Where are the buttons and the, the crosses? Okay. Are there teardrops on here? Super interesting. Okay. Oh, you guys. I know this person's work from a mile away. Um, I've been following her on Instagram for a while. I was following her prior to the show. She has a quilt with the number four on it that will just make your heart sing. It is one of my absolute favorite pieces ever. Um, and I was telling her, you know, she's not just, it's not just about this quilt, which is stunning. I saw it when she completed it, but I just really like her work as a whole, as she's just an amazing artist. And here she is showing off and she's got a couple of quilts that look just like this in different color stories. And each one is equally stunning. If you're not following her, I suggest you do it. Her name is Julie Smith, and her Instagram handle is like Zahada Mod underscore Mod. I'm sure, I'm butchering that because it's what I do. But is she in San Diego? See, you can't put stuff like that because I'll show up at her house. San Diego isn't far enough for me not to show up. Year after year, communities in California are devastated by wildfires as the earth warms. When the fires are burning, the sun becomes the amazing orange ball as the smoke blankets the sky. It's both absolutely beautiful and tragic at the same time. In 2021, we had 18 natural disasters in the U.S. that cost us over $1 billion each. Climate change is real and is destroying the planet. We must do better for our children. See? Never would have known that's what that was about. Never. I would have guessed many things. That is not any of them. It's amazing. Ooh, patchwork. <sighs> you guys, never in a million years can I improv. I just, you guys know I'm just not an improv person. But when I see somebody do this many scenes, I just, I, you just got to give it the love it deserves. People go crazy for this type of piecing too. Um, it's got a very Sean Kimber-esque kind of feel to it. This is done by Stephanie Lambert called Red Rocks. Crowds number two, Red Rocks. This quilt is a second in a series called Crowds. During 2020, oh, I missed being in a crowd and at a big event with a ton of people around. This quilt depicts a concert at the outdoor venue in Colorado, Red Rocks. The natural red sandstone rocks create the perfect amphitheater on a nice summer night. It's beautiful. I love the colors in the quilt and the motion of the quilting reminds me that crowds move together while each person remains an individual. I'm looking for the quilting now. Okay, I can kind of see it here. 
I see lines that look like they are running just parallel. That's pretty cool. Ooh, I'm a sucker for some blue and orange. I just am. They sit, they're complementary colors. They sit on the opposite side of the color wheel. You're supposed to love them because that's what that's what the color people tell you. And I do. I like it a lot. This is called Fire and Flood by Janet Jackson. Great name. Let's see if I can blow this up a little bit. The Brisbane Model Quilt Guild prides itself on using quilts to reflect pressing issues. When we designed this quilt, Australia had just been through the worst fires in history with homes, livelihoods, and families destroyed. We wept for those affected and consoled ourselves with the fact that things were going to get better. And then the floods came. We lived in a land of extremes and the effects of climate change are becoming increasingly devastating. Fire and flood captures this sobering dichotomy as flames and water ravage the quilt in a bleak apocalyptic display. The quilting, however, offers a window of hope and evokes the resilience of human spirit in the face of adversity. Each stitch represents an individual who reached out to others during these difficult times. Wow. These quilts have the heavy going on. You just never know. I love that that they do this, that we have these little excerpts. Oh, this is by Sarah Ruiz. Right now, typography. Well, typography has always been super cool, but this is a good one. This is a really, really good one. It's called Unscripted. I've always been interested in both the artistry and technical skills of typography and lettering and decided to kick off the new quilts. Unscripted B in June 2021 with a text inspired prompt. My B mates helped me create this colorful improv piece, modern take on an alphabet quilt. I love the mix of abstract, wonky, funky letters and the bright, saturated color palettes. Feel playful and happy. My mother, a former kindergarten teacher, apparently agreed and has already requested that I send this quilt to her. <laughs> I like it. That's cool. That's really cool. I want to do a B. Let's do a B, guys. What really stood out to me about this one here is the fact that these strips have to stop in a certain area for you to see the shape. I like it. And I love the fact that they're just nice straight line quilting. It's clean. It's cool. I would love this in a beachy bedroom kind of feel. I'm so scared to click to the next slide because I don't know what on earth this, uh, I don't know what on earth this is about, but that's how I see it. <laughs> This is by Jill Randall. I love the striking shape of hexagons and paired it with skinny, with striking contrast of navy and white strips. The title third power of hex is a nod to the math required to create this quilt into the hexagon shape itself. Go you, Jill, because I get it. I see that there was math involved. Scary math. Okay. You guys, as I was walking by this, I didn't get it. I didn't understand what I was looking at until I got way up on this. This quilt, I think this is part of the hexagon challenge also. This is all raw edged, but what you don't realize is the, the applique is the actual black. It's, this quilt is amazing in person. The amount of time and complexity and just, all the way out here. And you know me, I love some chunky quilting. I just, I love it. But these are actually created with spaces between the hexagons. It's just amazing. I'm I'm actually surprised this sucker didn't take first. Um, in regards to this particular challenge, this one knocks it out the park. It's called Double Hex. I would have bought this. I mean, I don't know how much it cost, but I would have totally wanted it. <laughs> That's how much I like it. Hexagons within hexagons are given an illusion of seeing them expand and contract at the center of the hexagons are exploding and they start contracting as you move away. At the outside, the hexagons are flat and at the inside, the hexagon shrinks completely away. Yeah, if you ever get a chance to see that, oh, but you probably won't because it's sold. But this one was a good one. It was very, very impressive. Oh, huh, got a close up picture. Okay, so can you see here? The black is the actual hexagon. We've jumped in the crevices here with the stitching. And uh, look, 
I mean, it's all, it's so clean to be raw edge. It's just amazing. Look at all these little tiny pieces. <laughs> this is, this is insane because this is not connected here. It's just space. It's just ridiculous. So cool. Some more in the hexagon challenge. I like hexagons. It's one of my, um, one of the shapes that I like. This is nice and simple and another clean one. Um, definitely beautiful wall hanging. And as we get more, you know, further down here, we've got more and more of that black peeking through and beautiful matchstick quilting. I'm going to try matchstick quilting at some point. Now, when am I going to do that? Who knows? But this is called Fill Me Up by Trisha Young. I'm always drawn to very simple and clean designs for this piece. The intent was to increase the darkness of each hexagon from top to bottom. I quilted it with matchstick quilting on my domestic machine, starting with a light color thread and moving into a dark thread as the hexagons filled up. Wait. Oh, I like that. So th that means that she stopped here and then went through this with a darker thread. I like that. I like it a lot. I love a thread change, guys. Love it. Oh, denim. I didn't see a ton of denim. At one point, the whole world was denim crazy. Denim quilts this, rag denim that. I didn't see a lot of denim this year. And we've got these nice, uh, just a nice denim quilt. I love when people mix machine quilting and like hand tying. Oh, there's something about that. I think it's because it's like a nod to the quilts that I saw growing up. I like this. It's called Positively Square. This is in the handwork category. I'm back at the denim again. Something about the range of shades and tones, the uneven dye and wear, and of course, saving these discarded clothes from the landfill. Can't even remember quite how this design came into being. Maybe I've wiped a lot out of 2020 in my memory. I do know that those stripes of orangey red make me positively happy every time I look at this quilt, and the ties add an extra bit of joy too. Same. Orange is one of my favorite colors. I was looking for a third a third quilt to post. So if you guys look at my Instagram, I post in sets of threes and I had done kind of what I wanted to do for QuiltCon and I had one more post to do. I grabbed this. This is absolutely striking to me. It, it appears that someone took great thought and care in the way that they colored this. Um, which colors are sitting next to what colors? This kind of stuff just sucks me all in. This green right here next to this magenta, next to this dark purple, next to this lavender kind of periwinkle, the gradient from these dark blues, the color thought that must have gone into this is just unbelievable. There are some people that can just pull color intuitively. There are some people who work really, really hard at it. I feel like this is somebody who just gets it. I don't know who they are. I've never seen them before. But this quilt draws me in. I love the fact that I'm being pulled to, I feel like I'm standing at the bottom of this and I would love to see buildings above my head that were this colorful and beautiful. I'm just, I'm just, just love it guys. Love it, love it, love it. This is called City Lights by DJ Jobbins. Um, they are Darling DI on the Instagram. By night, city lights twinkle and enchant, but they also cast dark shadows, giving me the perfect subject to explore color and value. The sheen of silvery gray taffeta used in the negative spaces suggests reflections from the soaring pieced towers. And I hand quilted the entire quilt in a rainbow of pearl eight threads to suitably convey tiny twinkling city lights. God, I wish I had read this while I was there so that I could have looked at it. I didn't even realize this was taffeta. Oh, guys, it's a good one. It's a really, really good one. I like this. I like this color story. I want this on a wall in my house. It's simple. It's clean. It's geometric. It's bright. It gives me a little bit of all the things that I like. I'm glad that this made it into the show. It's called Equilibrium by Anna Smoiska. Kaya, she's in a place that I literally have never heard of. I mean, granted, geography is not my thing, but where is Rodno Belosaurus? How did they even know that this was happening to enter 
you know, this is so international, it's amazing. Fire and water, heat and cold, dawn, sunset, day and night. Everything that happens in life is made up of opposites. And that's what balances consist of. Not wrong. Not wrong. Lots of color here. Look at the quilting right here. I love when people do a little matchstick and then you get kind of a trapuncto kind of feel when you don't. Lots of different quilting here. Who made this? What are they talking about? This is called Folkloric Number Three. Folkloric Number Three is part of a series in which I break down the elements of vibrant, multicolored skirts worn by Mexican Oflacorico dancers. Learning this dance as a child, I was entranced by swirling motions and layers upon layers of color and direction. This study is meant to celebrate the motion of skirts and full twirl. I designed and created templates of the different pieces and machine pieced it. Nice. This was entered in the piecing category. I like this. I like it. Flocorico. I've seen it. It's like a mix of, think of like a mix of river dance and tap dancing. Kind of. It's really nice. It's a beautiful dance. I like it. You guys, ombres and basically a black and white kind of feel through it. Are we surprised? We're not attracted to it. Love it. Nice and easy quilting here. Nothing to distract. When you take these super lights and throw in a super dark, you get drama. Just a nice, nice quilt. Warp and Weft by Michelle Della Maria. This quilt was made during a workshop with Maria Shell. Oh, I like that. Where we were challenged to find inspiration in patterns. I chose to replicate weaving as I find deep meaning in the visual representation of being connected. After laying some long strips of fabric and a range of values and colorways on my design walls, I took a picture and used the layout app to make this design. The pointed quilting design done free motion with a ruler is meant to accentuate the overlapping directions of the warp and weft. She's not wrong. It does. And it's pretty. You guys, anytime I see a purple to a yellow to a cream, I'm in. You can't miss. This is by Cassandra Beaver as a pandemic. War through 2020, we all needed something to look forward to, and Quilt Con Together was a bright spark in a dreary winter. In anticipation of the event, I decided to quilt the countdown by working on this quilt every day for the 100 days leading up to Quilt Con Together. A small amount of sewing each day grew consistently to emerge as a friend, a finished quilt by the time we gathered virtually. As we all ventured out into in-person events, this quilt has the opportunity to emerge once more in a physical form in the outside world. QuiltCon Together was QuiltCon's answer to like a virtual QuiltCon while, um, you know, we were all locked down in the pandemic and she did a countdown and a lot of people participated. It was a whole thing. I totally missed it that year. I hated it. I felt very left out. If you guys have followed me for any time, my claim to fame is the... Uh, teacup quilt and this is the person who did this and this was the very first thing that I saw and I was like it just all clicked for me um this is the geeky bobbin she made this pattern this is the pattern that I saw that I was like I want to it just inspired me to do that piece that I'm obsessed with it's my Alice in Wonderland inspired I do quilt space on Disney attractions or characters or whatever and this is where it all started right here. Huh, I'm glad that I know that, that that's the Geeky Bobbin because apparently I didn't take a picture of who did this. This one right here I'm drawn to, it looks like wedges, black and white stripes, guys, it's me all day long. I love how this was cut and chopped up right here. Oh, it goes all the way down if you follow it and comes back, I like that. It's really cool, it's just a cool piece. Clockwork Universe, Lenny Van, I do not, I just hate that I can't say this name properly, and this is skewed. The abstract design suggests a closer view of a larger universe of elements attached through the black and white connecting poles and supported by the black lines that echo thin wires stitched into the background. The varying orientation of the elements creates movements that is suggested of a clockwork although working from an initial sketch, the individual elements were largely created improvisational. And decisions on colors and placements were made throughout the creative process. The work was started 
during a month long small group workshop with Irene Roderick. And while everyone worked on a completely different projects, the weekly sessions provided valuable lessons in design, as well as feedback and encouragement. That's nice. Oh, guys. Oh, my goodness. This is it. This is number one. So I couldn't decide between the, um, the stars or this one. I just kept going back and forth, like, which is my favorite? Which is my favorite? And they sit right there together. I really don't know that I truly have a favorite. But this one here, I'm one of those people who can go to a quilt show and stand in front of a quilt for a while. Just stand there and stare at it and be perfectly content. This is one that I really wanted to spend some time with. And I did take a chance and spent some time with this and read where this started from. So she saw an artist and she liked it and she was like, I want to turn that into a quilt. And it's funny that she did that because I've seen a couple of artists that I'm like, I just want to do a quilted version of this particular painting. I don't know how on earth she did this though. I have no idea how, it's like how, you know? I get it. It was a painting. You saw it. You were inspired by it. She wanted to change it into a quilt. But how on earth did you come up with this shape? And then you have to put this in here. This, this is a work of art. And it's not for sale. It's called Rhythm and Blues. I was enamored by the symmetry and complexity of the curves and the geometric shapes in this design by graphic artist Matt W. Moore, who graciously gave me permission to turn it into a quilt. I took his line drawing and enlarged it to full size for the pattern. Okay, from the paper, I cut out each piece individually and used those as templates to cut and sew the various blues together. Because the design is so symmetrical, I placed the shades of blue asymmetrically to create a variation in the rhythm. <sighs> Terry, wherever you are, you are special for this because. I would have never, ever, ever, ever um, been able to do something like that. There's just no way. I like this. This bird, the, oh, the shapes here, the handwork, the name down here. I like everything about this. This binding. This is just great. This quote brings me great joy. Look right here. Look at that handwork. And this was put in the piecing category, and it's called... Guacamaya from Matilda. Hmm. I designed this quilt for the arrival of our baby daughter, Matilda. Since we are far away from my motherland, Venezuela, I wanted to create a piece that could bring her the warmth of our culture and the brightness of our country. Choosing the Guacamaya in Venezuela national colors, Original illustration by James Wright and the nod to the flag on the binding. The stitches represent the time that we patiently waited for her arrival. The short space between them created a texture, which I read is good for brain development and newborns. I decided to do the exercise of piecing with curves. Use paper sacking's drunkard's path templates to achieve a more dynamic design and taking the curve game to the extreme. Amplify it by hand quilting. Nailed it. I love that. So sweet. If you guys have been around any time, you've heard me talk about Phil. I am obsessed with Phil. Phil is in my guild. He's an exceptional artist and he is just an amazing person. And this is his favorite quote. He, he just gets giddy when he sees it, as do many other people. It won best, best in piecing. And I think it's judge's choice too. It's called, it, it, she entered it in for use of negative space. It's called Jessica's Big Skirt by Patty Kopok, maybe? Inspired by a drawing done by my granddaughter, Kira, when she was about five years old. The skirt comes together accidentally. When I was sewing tiny scraps together for placemats, still need to make the placemats. People love that quilt. When you see this quilt in person, you do not get it. You have to look at this really through the eyes of a camera or a phone or something because it comes to life. It's just amazing that somebody thought to do this and put in the work to do this because this is insane. This kind of reminds me of the 
I think it was last year or the year before, somebody did a QR code that totally worked. This is really innovative. Um, and I definitely would consider that a modern quilt because they're using like modern technology to make things kind of awesome. Use of negative space, which we call a <laughs> Daniel Ket Ketchum. And it's just a sum of its parts. Pretty cool. This is neat. I just love this. If you guys were with me with the lives, I just get such a kick out of the white in the eyes here. Love the binding. Love that they washed it so that it, it crinkles. You know, some people are very particular about how pristine their quilts are when they're given or shown. And some people like the quilted crinkly look because we're quilters and once you wash a quilt, it gets all crinkly. 1988, driving my Subaru in Littleton, Colorado with the house martinis blaring from the tape deck. Camera tossed on the seat for a quick and easy film photos. Wearing my favorite navy pant and yellow eyesod with the collar popped up. Red lips because always a red lip. Okay, Jennifer Bailey. Self-portrait 1988. I'm here for it. Always a red lip. I swear up and down. I know Julie's work from a mile away. However, I had no idea that she did this quilt here. This is also Julie Smith. She's the one that did one of those gradiating oranges to purples. Um, and she did this one too. And I think it's cool. It's got my colors in there. It's got an orange in there and some blues. It's just, it's just cool. I started this quilt with the mission of showing how beautiful black is not only in its own right, but also how it displays other colors so vibrantly. The seed of the design came from some photos I took of unsewn blocks that I had creatively stacked on my table. As I worked with the negative space on my design wall, I started to see the night sky as it transformed into the new day with the first breaks of light. Cool. A better picture of that. Why didn't I read from that? Simple, clean. You guys know how much I like stripes. It's not much more to say about it. It just looks good. This is a quilt that I would totally like. It gives me a beachy vibe. I like the fact that the quilting here is spaced out. I like over here that it's tight. I like that it's been washed. It's just nice and clean. Oh, shoot. Did I not get? Oh, I hate when I do that. Okay, I don't know who did this, guys. Don't freak out. Whoever did it did an awesome job, but I just don't know who it was. Oh, maybe I told us during the live, hopefully. Um, this one here, I love that this actually comes together with the use of quilting, not necessarily with the colors. I mean, these two shades here are different, but this quilting really makes these stand out. I think it's really pretty. Um, this is 1969. When I began my love affair with improv layered circles, I became fascinated by the endless outcomes that were possible with the changes in color placement, value, and size. I had a flashback to 1969 when I learned a coloring technique that was used to create layers and layers of colored circles. This technique had been my first taste of creating art, and my six-year-old self spent hours playing with color, placement, size, design options. I named this quilt 1969 as a link between my creative layered circles with crayons and creating with fabric, my current creative medium of choice. That's awesome. Susan Santis Teven. I like that. I'd actually like to know the original technique of doing those circles. This quilt is so striking in person. I kept turning around looking at it while I was doing the live. I just, I kept looking. Check out this quilting that runs right through this beautiful lavender shape, these curves. It's so what I would consider modern. I would really consider this modern. I like it so much. I know people have all these views about what's modern, what's not. But this, when I think of modern, this is the kind of thing that I think about these shapes, these just smooth curves with great big blocks of color and lots of negative space. I think this is a, a great quilt. This is called Citron Swirl by Kelly Spell. Go Kelly, go Kelly. This quilt is a second piece in an ongoing collection of work I refer to as my Swirl series. The design was inspired by a Bass Relief at the Tennessee Valley, Valley Authorities Raccoon Mountain Pumped Storage Plant. Whoa, say that 10 times fast. The circle, oval, and swirls are a nod to the facility's massive turbines and the water they pump from the Tennessee River. I really like that quilt. 
this one here was kind of eye-catching too. It's got orange. Apparently I like orange. It's got some curves here. Look at this quilting. We're going to drop on down here this way and we're going to come back over and swoop up through here. Kind of gives you an echo feel to the shapes that are already in here. It's called Cloud Surfing. I like the name of this. This is by Shannon Frazier. The Cloud Surfing quilt results from my first foray into designing an improv quilt at the computer. Normally my improv designs happen on the cutting mat, but after designing a slew of designs on the computer, I changed track and tried my improv approach digitally. Cloud Surfing is the design that emerged. I was most curious about how the negative space enhanced the feel of the clouds floating and highlighted the movement inherent in the design. That's interesting. I want to improv something on a computer. Is that really improv though? Because you kind of know what's going to, I don't know. What do I know? Interesting though. <sighs> this was another quilt, guys, that just rocked my world. There were a couple of people during the live who really liked this quilt. This is a good one. This was on a one of my top ones for getting like the viewer's choice too. Like I was really, really thinking about this one. This was in the running. Love this quilting. I love how this, can you guys see how this swirl? It's in this too. Oh, the transition is just beautiful. Then there's a, a hard transition from this pattern to this pattern. Boy, I like this. This looks so good. It's called the Big Fib. Imposter syndrome is real for many of us, whether you're dressing yourself for a job interview, rocking your newborn to sleep, standing to speak in front of a group, or making your side gig your real career. We can all feel like we're not good enough. The Big Fib is a whimsical take on a Fibonacci swirl as the creator. That's me makes a leap from art culture to modern culture because yes, she can. <laughs> all right, Brandy Maslowski. It's pretty cool. It's a really nice quilt. I really enjoyed that. Again, on my live, a live prior to my lives at QuiltCon, I just jumped for joy when I got a chance to see this in person. I caught this one on Instagram and it is stunning in person. If I can get close enough, I will show you guys that what one of the things that makes this awesome is not just this amazing quilting here, but the fact that there is a tiny strip that's probably less than an eighth that is between these. And it's a special technique that she uses and she teaches and I'm dying to know how to do it because I have no idea how that works. But this quilt is super cool. And she has a couple of other variations of this too. It's by Jenny Haynes. It's called Wax Lyrical. And it says limits aren't limiting. At least that's how I see things after many years of not feeling at all limited by the quarter circle. It's time around my play with the classic drunkard's path shape that led me to curves that float, almost nesting them together but with a small gap made the shapes appear to sit on top of the background, trimming the plain blocks to fit skinny insert strips. Blocks made the shapes that fit each other just so. And that is something that makes me very happy. The name Wax Lyrical comes from the imaginary, imag, something of lava. Oh, the lava lamps and wax melting in warm water. Oh, the imagery of lava lamps and wax melting in warm water. <laughs> That's cute. That quilt is worth every bit of 1500 if not more. The quilt is amazing. Oh, more applique. Doesn't this just make you happy? This one just made me happy. It's like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of cactus with berries on it or something. I think it's super cute. This is in the applique category. It's called Melon Sky by Anne. Oh, I can't see this. I think it's Fatelson. The idea here is that the dotted pink half circles are watermelon interiors. Oh, that's funny. The green radiating stripes of circles are watermelon exteriors. The orange circles are cantaloupes and that they're all whirling in a green sky. The dotted fabrics in the background seem like a starry sky. Dots on dots are so much fun. Stripes on stripes and dots on stripes are also visually gracious and entertaining. 
I over dyed many different fabrics to get the gradations that make the sky dark at the top and lighter at the bottom. Long, slow gradations are just wonderful to look at. I think so too. Let me see some of this dyed fabric we've got here. I missed that part. Oh, look, it's dark. It's dyed fabric. They do kind of give you a fruity feel, especially after you've been told that they're watermelons and cantaloupes, right? Oh, okay. So this is, they did a, a section at QuiltCon that showcased the um, indigenous quilts. And I believe that quilting came, you know, from, there's a lot of influence, I should say. Let me just leave it at that. There's a lot, a lot of influence from, um, from different cultures in quilting. And it's nice to see them get some um, some shine. So let's see here. Let me see if I can. This quilt was made to honor my chiefs, the original 29 Navajo code talkers. It is also a thank you to, to quilt to my Shelly Joe Morris Jr., he couldn't talk about what happened during his tours. He would say that he never fired his gun at the enemy. He would use our beautiful Dine Bazad. I can barely see this, guys. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. The other one says, this is the first ledger quilt I made. It's made to honor the strong women of the world. It's also my family history and the, floor, the four influential people in my life, retired Senator Ben Nighthorse Campbell, named the quilt, in talks with the National Museum of the American Indian DC to be part of their collection. Wow. This is called the Star Among the Shankawakan. It's by Susan Hudson, and it says Navajo at the bottom. I think it's really cool that they included these quilts this year. Let's go back. It's really, really pretty. Okay, let's see here. And here's the other one. There are two things there. Look at that beautiful Lone Star. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. You guys know I talked about this quilt to death. I didn't realize that these had been hand dyed until somebody who was in the live with me was like, hey, I bet these are, are hand dyed. And they were absolutely right. And that makes this even more difficult and interesting and amazing. I just love the gradations. I love a gradient. I'm always drawn to a gradient. It's been put on black. I think the color story is interesting. It's like the center here is pretty much glowing. And the fact that she was able to control all that is beyond impressive. This is called Watercolor Study Number 4 by Audrey. I've got to blow this up a bit. Audrey Esseray. I've long been fascinated by the transparency and colors created by thin layers of watercolor paint applied to paper using the veil painting technique. To translate this technique to fabric, I challenged myself to dye gradations fabric that started with each hue and faded to black. I leveraged many hand dyed shades of warm magenta and cool turquoise to emphasize the outlines of each overlapping circle, watching as the once bold and bright center subtly vanishes into darkness. The quilting lines alternate, creating texture while leaving just a hint of magenta and turquoise glow. Yeah, that's that's an amazing quilt to me. I couldn't stop walking past it, and it appears that it's got some gradiated threads. Y'all know how I feel about a thread change. Oh, this is a good one too. <laughs> this was a this was a really good one. Um, look, just look at it. I just see so many different things popping out. It's got some optical illusions here. Some, I, I don't know, depending upon the way I turn my head, I see this going in different directions. I see this protruding. I see it recessing. Um, I'm now seeing pyramids and buildings like running through them. The quilting in the background is just gorgeous. Oh, love this quilt, love this color story. I, I just think it's beautiful. This is called, oh, Piercing Pyramids. Let's see if I can blow this up and actually read. Uh, by Claire Victor. This modern quilt is a part of a series where I'm trying to get a 3D effect with geometric shapes. I envision as pyramids with stiff ribbon-like shapes piercing through them. I've continued the ribbons onto the background quilting design. 
It is English paper piece, double batted and free motion quilted on a domestic bermina. Wow. Didn't know that. That's free motion. You better work. Let me look at that one more time. Look at it. And yeah, I get it. It does look like pyramids now that she's told me. I mean, I was able to kind of see it before once I stopped to really look at it. I like that study. This quilt here, it's the quilting. And it's just simple. And it's, you know, kind of tricky here with this. It's not like a hard angle. It's just like a little bit of an angle. And this drops down. Just a cool quilt. It's by Laura Strickland, Pacific Sunset, Orange Blossom Quilt, this traditionally piece quilt. Emanates a cool coastal vibe with an 80s retro feel. It's a true throwback to those magical mall era days. So roll on your bubblegum kissing potion lip gloss. Grab your jelly bracelets, slide on your checkerboard vans, and throw your hair on the side ponytail as we jump into our time-traveling DeLorean. This quilt is totally stitching. <laughs> I'm tickled. And if you if you got a chance to go in our booth, you see that she's got like this 80s vibe. Um kind of quilt pattern that I was really interested in because it had like a cassette tape that was a really strange shape. I thought it was cool. She's actually very, very cool. Got a chance to meet her and I really like that quilt. Can I get to the center of this quilt? Let's just look at it from afar for a moment. It's a circle quilt. I like circle quilts. It's a geometric quilt. I like geometric quilts. It has a gazillion thread changes in it, all starting from right here in the center. And let's go check out this center. Isn't it gorgeous? And we it's just an optical illusion. I shouldn't say it's just because I certainly couldn't make it, but it's an optical illusion quilt with all of these different color threads going through it. Makes me happy. It's a rainbow. I like a rainbow. I'm a sucker for a rainbow. Use of negative space. This is by Tara Evans. Chroma came from my desire to design a dramatic and deceptive round quilt that plays with the eye. I love striking effects of a two-tone quilt, but wanted to bring in some color with the quilting. I used eight colors of thread and divided the geometric design into eight teardrop shapes. Each teardrop was quilted with a different color. The teardrops radiate around the quilt, making it so that the colors of the thread overlap each other. Because the, the density of the quilting increases as you get closer to the center, the saturation of the color of the thread is more prominent. In addition, the eight colors of thread were also used as bobbin thread, so the same color fading effect can be seen on the backing as well. As I experienced my life, as as I experienced life, my outlook on issues shifts to deeper than just black and white. It's a beautiful, beautifully done quilt. Chroma. Okay, let's back out of you. Oh, I like this. I like the overlapping circles quilts. I've seen this pattern a few times and when people do it right, it really looks cool. I think this is done right. I think it looks really, really cool. I like the colors that you get when you overlap these colors. Such a cool technique. Love the matchstick quilting that goes through, but doesn't, does it go all the way through? It does go all the way through. And then we have some other overlapping quilting here in a, in a, Secondary color, I believe. Watercolor Eclipse. I have long been fascinated by the transparency and colors created by thin layers of watercolor paint. Is this the same person who did the other one? Could be, could not be. To translate this technique to fabric, I challenged myself to take a collection of fabrics in various shades of turquoise, yellow, green, orange, and arrange them to emphasize the overlapping circles within the design while also moving generally from light to dark across the quilt. The pale yellow quilting lines gently show against the white background and the design is accented with four neon yellow spiral quilting circles. Watercolor Eclipse is the second pattern I've published in this series of quilts. Oh, she's the one who's doing them. That's interesting. She's the one who's making those patterns because they are, I've seen them and I've seen them done a few times and people do some really interesting things with them. All right, guys, I believe... We did that one already. We did this one already. Oh, <sighs> look at this. This color story, oh. In person, it'll stop you in your tracks. This lavender 
the texture that you get from the quilting in the background. We've got some swirls, we've got some circles, we've got some harder lines here. This is just the coolest color story to me. This is actually from the same person who did those pyramids. I didn't realize that. I believe she's in, I think both of them are like in my top 10. They're super, super cool to me. I loved this quilt. I spent quite a bit of time just kind of staring at it. This one is called Falling Folds by Claire Victor, inspired by the art of origami. This modern quilt depicts images, pieces of folded paper. The same design is repeated and quilted into the background to add an additional subtle texture. The quilt is hand pieced by using English paper piecing method, double batted and free motion quilted on a domestic granina. That quilt, I'm telling you guys, if you guys ever get a chance to see it in person, you'll be like, oh, we get it. Because I just don't think this picture does it justice. And that's it. One hour, 52 seconds. That's what I'm talking about. We just hung out for one whole hour, guys. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. QuiltCon was amazing. These are the quilts that stood out to me. There are a gazillion quilts <laughs> that were there. You can check out the website to see more. I think I'm going to do one more video that doesn't show anything except for the pictures, just so that people who don't have a ton of time, like an hour to spend watching this can actually get through. And then they can come back to this to reference who did what. If you guys made it through this far, you guys are my people. And I thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys on the next one. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Paulette.